Hey guys, it's Lady in a Fishbowl. I'm not believing what I just did. I just have to tell you because I know I've got this stomped look on my face. I just recorded a nice 10 minute vlog and it wasn't recording on my webcam. I'm so stinking mad. I had done it precisely for once and got right to the point. So, okay, let me try to do this one more time. I'm so sorry about that, guys. Okay, so here we are. It is Monday, March 17th, and I just got back from the RE's office, the new RE. Remember, we moved to him in, in November. I had blood testing done, and this is our follow-up appointment. It got bumped a few times because of different conflicts, but we're finally here. We had the appointment today, and everything went just as I expected. He went over the results. I look great and everything from thyroid and all that stuff. Um, the three things he pointed out were, number one, the MTHFR, which I knew I already had. I knew I was homozygous for the C677T variant. Um, I knew that. Um, for that, he is recommending that I stay on the baby aspirin, stay on the methyl folate, not folic acid, and I'm going to have a whole other vlog about that later. Um, and he did say that if I do get a positive pregnancy test eventually, that he would like for me to be on the injectable Lovenox. So that's um, a definite new change. Second thing was the alpha thalassemia, which is the anemic kind of iron um, and blood thing that I tested positive for in my genetics. But my husband is not a carrier, so it means it would have nothing to do with my pregnancy. So that's good. Um, the third thing was my AMH. We knew it was not good. Um, he said it was undetectable. It was below 0.13. <sighs> I knew that. I, I mean, I knew that, but, you know. He said, I have very few eggs left to work with. And he explained it this way. <clears throat> he drew a graph with a line here, and then he had, like, age 20, 30, 40, and 50 here. And he said, we start out high, and as we get older and go closer to menopause, we nosedive in our fertility ability. He said, more than likely, one of two things happen. I do have endometriosis. He said, there's studies now that show that it does affect that quality. That I could have started out normal and then endometriosis started into my body and I started to nosedive early because I'm I'm down here way low at 40 instead of 50 or in the between. Or I never was up where most people are at 20, that I was compromised from the beginning and that so I'm nosediving earlier. Um, I did find out tonight just from talking to my mom that she went into menopause right at 39 or 40 and that's how old I am. I'm 39, so um, genetically I am disposed to it. I can thank my parents because they each gave me one strand of the MTHFR and all that stuff. So it's just genetics. There's nothing I can do to fix it. Um, of course, he recommended number one. He gave us some options, but the number one was IVF number and, and with PGD. Then he said if we can't afford the PGD to do IVF, and if we can't afford the IVF, then we can look at other options. And we told him flat out, until we saw the, we, you know, we have the house that we lived in before we moved here and built, um, when Kevin's job moved here, <clears throat> and we were renting it out. We renovated it last year, and it's up for sale, and until it sells, we are, our finances are compromised. We're, you know, the money that we could be putting in savings, around eight to $1,000 a month, is going into a pot to pay for property taxes and homeowners insurance and power bills and all that for an empty house. So until we can sell that house, there's nothing more we can do financially at this point. Um, so he understood that, and so he jumped right on the bandwagon and suggesting that we try to do an IUI. I have two IUIs left in my, my insurance coverage. The bad news is I ran out with my last doctor on the other six IUIs that I never knew I had MTHFR for that, you know, I, there's possibility I could have had implantation failure in some of those, and we just never knew it because I was taking in HCG injections. So those numbers wouldn't have shown up because I still had HCG in my, my body from the trigger. Who knows if those were actually implantation failures or if they were, uh, they or if they could have been successful um, with my new diagnosis. Who knows? You can't live in the past, but because of those six IUIs I did with this past doctor, it exhausted all of our prescription coverage for fertility drugs. They only gave us $2,500 lifetime max anyway, which is just ridiculous. If you know anything about fertility drugs, you know that that's just like, I, I did six IUIs. The, I had to do, it only covered five of them. I've still got, I did six, plus I have two more, and they didn't even give you enough coverage for medicine 
to do ADIUI. So it's just ridiculous. Somebody in the insurance world obviously has never dealt with infertility. So, um, sorry, there's a hair on my screen. It's bothering me. Okay. Um, so anyway, we will be paying out of pocket. The plan is I am 10 DPO today. I should start my period anywhere between 13 and 14 DPO, which puts it at the end of the week sometime. If I'm not pregnant now, which I don't think I am, I took a pregnancy test today just to see before I went to the doctor, and it is negative. Nothing there. Mm, Y'all can see it, but there's nothing there. <laughs> um, and, and believe me, I, I can see a line when nobody else can. There's nothing there. Um, so I'm not pregnant at this point. I may be, but I don't know it. I have had tests that turn from not positive to positive in this time frame, so I'm not saying I'm not, but the, the um, odds are I'm not. I do have a bit of good news on that, though. In this natural cycle, I had my progesterone taken at 6 DPO, I think, instead of 7 DPO, according to what we finally figured out, um, but it was 14, which is fabulous. They wanted it over 10 unmedicated, and it was fabulous. I was very excited about that because there's been many a cycle that I've had like one or point something. So I'm really excited that at least that's working. <laughs> I don't think I ever I have a progesterone issue, obviously. So anyway, long story short, he jumped right on the bandwagon and said, well, if we can't do IVF right now, you've got two IUIs left, let's do one. And he just whipped out a piece of paper and got to writing on this calendar and he said, here's what we're doing. So here's the plan. <laughs> and I was like, you know, Day one of my cycle, I start for Mar I start for Mara, or Letrozole is the generic name for it, and I do five milligrams of it day one, two, three, four, and five, and then on day six, I'm starting some type of SF FSH drug. I don't know if it'll be Gonal F or Fostem. They'll call me tomorrow. The only thing that could stop this from happening would be if it's just an absorbent amount of money um, <clears throat> that they ask for these injections. If that's the case, we would put it off for a cycle. Till we can get our um, our savings built up a little bit um, and then do it next month. Plus, he said that he had some um, prescription places in other areas that, um, or I guess not, I don't, I don't know, not in America. I think Canadian. I don't know. I hope, I hope that's not wrong to say that. But um, that we could get it at... A lot cheaper price so I mean if worst case is if they call us and it's some exorbitant amount that we can't not afford this month then we'll just put it off for a few weeks so but the hope is tomorrow they'll call me and it'll be within our price range um, and we'll see how that goes um, but if all goes well then I will start for Mara this weekend and injectables now we've had six IUIs that failed like I said so I don't know how this is gonna work it's a new doctor. He did say he was going to monitor me closely and he would be tweaking my injections if needed. And I think that's great because I never had any kind of tweaking with my other doctors. It was just, you take this and then we're going to do this. So it'll be interesting to see. And if nothing else, it'll give him a good idea of how I react to medications despite my numbers. Because there are a lot of women who, I mean, there are a lot that don't, but there are a lot that do, even though they have bad numbers on paper, like for AMH or whatever, that they still respond pretty decently to drugs. So the hope is at least I'll get three or four follicles. I know in my past IUIs, I always had two to three. Um, and that was just injectable straight, not with jump starting it with a pill. So I've never had a, they call it a hybrid. I've never had a hybrid cycle. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Um, yeah, so that's where we are right now. Um, and like I said, if I get a BFP, they will start me on the Lovenox. I'm taking a baby aspirin right now um, for the MTHFR. Also taking the methylated folate. So that's all good game plan that I wasn't doing with any of my other IUIs before. So there's a lot of good things that can ha have occurred from moving to this new doctor. So there we are. I did that in less than 10 minutes, and I'm very proud. <laughs> that's what happens when you record it once when you didn't. And once when you think you did and you didn't, so then you get the speed read version. So anyway, um, if you're praying kind, please say prayers that our house um, down the road will sell because it's 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 about 45, 30 miles from here. Um, it would take a huge burden off of us and just really help things out and open up the door for us to do IVF. So please um, pray for that. And but you know, we pray even more that maybe this IUI or the next one will work, and we won't have to chip out the money for that. 
would be a miracle. Um, and I do believe God can do miracles. So we'll see. I am praying for everybody here. Thank you for watching my video and praying for those who have got special tests this week. I know some of you have got some big stuff coming up and um, I'm, I'm praying for those of you who are recently pregnant and for those of you who are trying to get pregnant like me. So baby dust and lots of prayers and love going out right now from Alabama. And um, oh, excuse my hoarse voice. I'm I got allergies, so I didn't want you to think I sounded funny for no reason. I sound like a man. But anyway, love you guys, and I hope y'all have a great week. And the next update will be one of two things, either a pregnancy update, which I don't think it's going to be, or it'll be an IUI update. So let's get this ball rolling. Talk to you later. Y'all have a great week. Bye.